afternoon. Looking out my window here, it's cold. It's given a little uh, snain. I think that's what the weather people call it. A mixture of snow and rain. Um, but nothing seems to be sticking, which is good. Uh, yesterday, last night, our street department uh, pre-treated the streets. Now, having said that, I know that when it rains, that kind of washes some of that off a little, but they had to do that pre-treating because, of course, you never know. You're right on this cusp here. The temperature could go either way. So, drive careful out there. Um, the forecast isn't too bad. It's not for hardly any accumulation. Um, so, hopefully the forecast is right. Anyway, it's Friday afternoon. I got a couple of things to chat with you about this afternoon. Of course, we're going to talk about the COVID numbers. We're going to talk about uh, the vaccine and vaccinations. Uh, um, and then we'll take your questions. So, so COVID numbers are, are uh, continuing to be high, but they are, uh, they continue to be a little bit better each day. Not not notice not distinctly better but a little bit better yesterday we reported 77 cases new cases in the city of st louis um so we are running on on average you know um one of the things that i was going to point out today is that you know we are continuing to do a lot of testing in the city of St. Louis. Our positivity rate, seven day positivity rate is down to about 12%. We're glad about that, it's still too high, but it, it was up in the 20% range. So down to about 12%. Um, you know, I think, I think this is kind of interesting. The city of St. Louis, since the pandemic started, has done 225,000 COVID tests. It's a lot of tests. And of course, many people have had them test more than once, but still 225,000 tests done in the city of St. Louis since, since it began. Um, and so we, we've got to continue to test even though the vaccine is on the way. And you gotta, you've got to figure out who has it to the extent you can, how they got it. So that's, I think that's some interesting COVID information. We're glad that our positivity rate is down. Our testing is, is still going strong. And um, so it, it's still, everything is still too high, but it's all relative. Now, talk about the number of people that are in the hospital. For those of you who watch regularly, you know. Hospital data runs two days behind. So this data is probably Tuesday's data, um, maybe Wednesday's data. Total people in the hospital, either with COVID positive or suspected COVID positive, uh, dropped below 800. It was 794 the 794 people in the hospital. There are still a lot of them in ICU, 153 people in ICU. And of the people in, IC, in the ICU, 86 of them are on ventilators. That's still, those are still high numbers. Those are, are people that are, that are very, very ill. Um, so hopefully they will make a good a good recovery. Number of patients admitted to the hospital two days ago was 112. We had been down in the 80s. Of course, some of those days were over last week. Again, not as many people are admitted on the weekends uh, as there are during the week. Not as many people are tested on the weekends as they are they are during the week. Uh, and 190 
129 people were discharged from the hospital. So those are our COVID numbers, new cases, positivity rate, number of people in the hospital. We still, in the city of St. Louis, we are running on any given day. This is a seven day rolling average. We're running about 40 new cases per 100. 100,000 people, and that's how we get to 120,000 average cases. Uh, and that still is the lowest in the region um, by, a, a good, by a good margin. I attribute that to all of you who are wearing your mask, social distancing, washing your hands, and to our business owners who are uh, doing their best to do a good job to comply with all these mitigations. Uh, mitigation procedures, which which makes a difference. So that's COVID numbers. Now the thing everybody wants to know about the vaccine. When can I get my va vaccination? So <clears throat> the state of Missouri to date has received a little over a half a million doses of the vaccine. Only about, I haven't received our first shipment yet of, um, of the vaccine. We ordered 5,000 doses, which would cover our first responders primarily, police, fire, corrections, etc., cetera, and, and a few more. Uh, we are still hopeful. We really thought we might get, get some this week. Um, but, but there are many other counties in Missouri who also have not received any vaccine. So uh, we are hopeful that that will be in the very near future. And when that occurs, and I'm sure you may have, may have seen that the governor yesterday said that we could move to phase 1B. Now, we're still in phase 1A. The state is still in phase 1A. And phase 1A is long-term care facilities, their residents and their staff. So nursing homes, residential care facilities. It's public facing healthcare workers. People who work in the hospital. Maybe they're doctors and nurses. Maybe they're working admitting, maybe they work in dietary, but they are in contact with patients. And I know from our call on Tuesday with the pandemic task force that virtually all of the public facing hospital employees have been invited to get the vaccine. Um, many of them, 60 plus percent of them have received the vaccine have said, yes, I want it. You invited me. I want the vaccine. And they have received it. In fact, they are starting on round two. You know, every on the Pfizer vaccine, uh, two shots, three weeks apart on the Of course, we're going to vaccinate our firefighters, our police officers, our correction staff, our morgue, of course, EMS, EMT paramedics. They're all, they are all in, in phase 1A. And then first responders in phase 1B. Next, the next tier, it's on our website, by the way, if you're really interested in sort of digging into the details of this. But the next tier is high-risk individuals, and that is people over 65 plus people under 65 that have a chronic health condition. Now, we know that in the city, City of St. Louis, there are 41,000 people over 65. That's based on recent census estimates. So if we have 300,000 people, 40,000, 41,000 of them are over 65. Now, we also know that we have about 60,000 people in the city of St. Louis, 60,000 kids zero to uh, 18. So you got 40,000 over 
65. You get 60,000 under 18. So you're left with about 200,000 people in round numbers that are between 18 and 64. Of those 200,000 people, we don't have a way of knowing how many of them have chronic health conditions. But let's just, you know, make some, some guesses here. Maybe 20,000 of them would 10% of the people between 18 and 64 have some kind of chronic health condition, maybe. So those people, the over 65 and the folks under 65 with chronic health conditions are in the next tier. After we get, we will be working with our federally qualified health centers. We hope to also be working with CVS, with Walgreens, maybe some of the retail operations. We're in discussions with them about that right now because that's a big group of people when you think about 40,000 people over 65. And one of the things that I've read, and it makes some sense, that's ha people over 65 are taking the vaccine vaccination at a higher rate. I think that makes sense because people over 65, they don't want to get it. And they know that if they do get it, they're likely to have uh, very adverse effects of COVID. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear if it turns out to be true that pe people over 65 are taking it at a higher rate um, because they're gonna have the, the worst outcomes. They, I shouldn't say they, we are gonna have the worst outcomes. So <clears throat> at any rate, that's the vaccine. You heard uh, Vice President elect, or you heard President elect Biden last night in his speech uh, commit to rolling this vaccine out um, as quickly as possible. A goal of, of vaccinating 100 million people in 100 days. Uh, that's a that's a very audacious goal. Um, but we all have to gear up for this and it's going to take partnerships because uh, you know we don't want to see long lines and we, Dr. Martin Luther King's actual birthday, January the 15th, so happy birthday. As you know, the whole, whole country celebrates it on Monday. So City Hall will be closed on Monday. Uh, most government offices will be, most offices I think in general are closed on Monday. Um, so happy birthday to Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, and we're happy to celebrate on Monday. So questions? Okay, questions. First from Andrew today, who's watching. Hi, Andrew. Uh, does the city of St. Louis or the state of Missouri get to decide what tier uh, we are in currently when it comes to vaccines and vaccinations? Um really the state of Missouri, but the CDC uh, gets to decide. We are getting our vaccine. This is a free vaccine uh, as soon as we can get it quickly. We're getting our, our vaccine, of course, through the CDC. So you got to follow those guidelines. Uh, Chris's question has to do with primary care providers who uh, have said they'll offer vaccines. Mm -hmm. If they don't have, have it yet, do we know when providers who are unaffiliated with the major hospital systems might be able to begin vaccinating people? We don't, don't know that yet. Um, but, you know, the, they would also have to either receive their vaccine from the state or more likely through hospitals. And almost, almost all primary care doctors, medical doctors are affiliated with um, hospital. But the other folks who uh, uh, are also, of course, healthcare workers are dentists and um, physical therapists. And there's a lot of other people in that, in that group as well. Uh, Suzanne's question has to do with what the governor... Um, the terminology is a little bit difficult. It's phase 1A and phase 1B, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. 
just to make it hard to talk about. Um, so we will, of course, get through phase 1A first. Nursing homes, nursing home workers, public, uh, uh, public facing healthcare workers. And then the, the last thing in phase 1A is EMT, EMS, and paramedics. And as soon as we're through that, we will go to phase 1B, tier 1 which is first responders and emergency workers. And after that is tier one, tier two under phase one B. So. Uh, question about the positivity rate. You talked about it going down. Is mm -hmm. it going down because of fewer tests happening or is it going down because you think people are doing a better job of uh, some of the recommendations? Well, the more tests you do in general, this is a generalization, your, your positivity rate will go down. Um, so if you only test the people that, let's say, are sick and go into the hospital, that's what we were doing way, way, way back when, your positivity rate is going to be very, very high because you've already got people with symptoms, they're going to the doctor or the hospital hospital, a higher percentage of them are going to test positive. So our positivity the week ended last Sunday. We had done 7,700 tests for that, that week. The week before was 6,200. Don't forget, that was the week of New Year's. Not so many people testing. The week before that was 6,400. That was the week of Christmas. Whoops, I don't have, pardon? Oh, one more page, hang on. And then the week before that, when you're talking about the middle of December, was 7,800 people, 7,600 people, 8,200 people. That was one week, the week right before Thanksgiving. 7,600 people. So our testing um, is, is back up to more of a normal le uh, level, which is a little over a thousand tests a day just in the city of St. Louis. So I think this is a real decrease in the positivity rate because when you go back to other weeks, a couple, three weeks ago, when we were testing a similar number of people, our positivity rate was running 15, 16, 17 percent. So I believe this is a real decrease in the positivity rate. Now, it's got to stay down. Um, and anytime, you know, we're always, we're always sort of on the, on the lookout for anything that would just be an anomaly. But I think that in this case, in this case, this is a, a real decrease in the positivity rate. 12% is what it is for the last seven days, and that's the seven days ended last summer. Sunday, because it, um, that's one of, you know, we're looking at these numbers every day and, and trying to, to assess what's really going on. Other vaccine questions. Uh, Kim would like to know, do you know uh, if this city gets Pfizer or Moderna, or do you have a say in what you get? We don't know. Um, we are waiting for a response from could come from either Pfizer or Pfizer or Moderna, and we are prepared to handle either dose. We do uh, have a freezer, and um, so so we don't know. And you know, we may get Pfizer sometime and Moderna an, an, another time. We we just don't know that yet. Cindy's vaccine question uh, uh, for the folks in the tiers: uh, Do you know or anticipate? that people, like if you have pre-existing conditions and fall in tiers, do you have to prove what your condition is or how you qualify when it's your turn to uh, be able to get vaccinated? You know, I, I think that you may have to certify to it, test a test to it, but um, actual proof, somebody with, let's say, say uh, a heart condition, I, I, how would you prove it? You would have to have a 
doctor's note. So I don't believe you're going to have to prove it in um, in a in a real firm way, but you probably will have to attest to it. So some other questions we got have to do with uh, CARES Act, second CARES Act. Um, do you have a timeline on when? Some of the rental. This is from Alan. Do you have a timeline on when some of the rental relief will be more available to people in the community? So rental assistance is still available because in last Thursday, I believe it was, the first day that we were able to file with the U.S. Treasury, we filed to get the funding for the rental assistance directly coming to the city. This was available to, to cities with over 200,000 people who filed this paperwork with the U.S. Okay. Treasury. We did that uh, on the first day that we were available to, uh, that it was available to file. So we are expecting to get those funds. Uh, I believe those funds have to be dispersed to cities within 30 days of the date the bill was signed. Signed. And the president signed the bill a couple of days before New Year's, 28th maybe. So by the end of January, we should have that $9 million in rental assistance money available and would be then beginning through our partners um, to process those applications for people who need rental assistance because they've lost their job because of COVID, had their hours reduced because of COVID. Um, so it, it won't be it's the 15th today. It's a couple more weeks. Uh, Bill has a question about our vaccination notification survey. Mm -hmm. Other jurisdictions have launched them. County uh, is one example. Mm -hmm. Are you allowed to enter your information or fill out surveys in multiple jurisdictions? Do you have to reside in the jurisdiction? in which the survey you are uh, filling out helps but you work in another jurisdiction? Hmm. I think you are allowed to do that. But understand that, let me just say, 13,243 um, people had filled out our survey. So definitely sign up if you are a city resident. Understand that what you're signing up for is information. You'll be updated about, okay, your, your tier is up, your, it's your turn. So it's a way to stay on top of your tier and how will we know that because one of the things you have to do is fill out your birth date so we know how old you are. We've got, we'll have your email address of course so we can email, this will be done via email. Um, and then and we'll also, we're also asking for your occupation. So if you're a police officer, if you're a school teacher, there'll be a point in time school teachers, and it's not, not in the too distant future. That is going to be, when is it? It's a little, it's a little ways off. It's on our website, I believe. When are teachers? Teachers are going to fall into phase one B tier three. So teachers, childcare workers, um, food and agriculture, government, transportation systems, people who work for the water department or, or MSD. Those folks will be after the um, high risk individuals. And then I think. I think we just have two, two last questions, sort of about events and COVID-19. Uh, Ryan's question has to do with a trade show that was delayed from last fall, rescheduled for May. Are we optimistic that uh, that time frame, that big events like trade shows and large gatherings will be permitted again in the region? Will they be permitted? Will they per be permitted in May? Let's think about it this that is February March April 
really just depends on what our numbers look like, which is going to depend on how, how uh, diligent we are about the mitigation procedures and how diligent we are, how much vaccine we get, how many people take the vaccination. Um, so there are a lot of factors that will go into that decision. Right now, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'd be able to do that. And I, I don't know how big of a trade show it is or what the circumstance is here. Uh, but you know that I think it was the car show had to be canceled last week because here we are still running running these extremely high numbers. Um, so I'm hopeful that that will be the case, but there's just a lot we don't know yet. And the last new question and Sorry, similar, my phone is beeping. There we go. Uh, last question, uh, Will, similar, a little bit lighter note. What about Cinco de Mayo? That is from Will. Will. Gosh, hola. Uh, I don't know. I I think you know uh, um, St. Patrick's Day parade has been canceled, but Cinco de Mayo is about six weeks after that. Fifth of May, St. Patrick's Day, seventeenth of March. So I don't know. I think. I think it, that it's it's very hard to figure that out. Will, will I don't know that we will be able to be in big crowds. You or the city get in determining uh, when fans can come to Enterprise, a mm -hmm. return to a Blues game, or maybe even a Cardinals game in the spring. We are working with both of those entities, both the Blues and the Cardinals, um, to try to work out. You saw saw that the Blues played the uh, night before last, I guess it was, to 300 guests. Well, obviously that's not what they, that's not enough and that's not what they want to do. But if I, uh, I, I think it's likely that over time it will ramp up. When will it be back, back to where you can have a full Bush Stadium or a full, full uh, Enterprise Center? That's a ways off. That is it for questions. That's it. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Drive safely out there in this kind of inclement weather. Um, it's almost like it's it's winter now. We haven't had much winter yet. I can't say that I missed it though. So have a have a great weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe out there. Wear your mask. Thanks. Bye bye.